In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint some Space Marine vehicle armour, details like the wires, and even how we can approach painting some markings. Welcome to Taped Already. My name's Michael, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint the Ballista Dreadnought. Any brushes and paints I use in this tutorial will be linked in the description, as well as being shown on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content, I would love for you to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. It really helps get my content out to more people. And if you want to help support the channel and what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon which I'll also link in the description. I really do appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to creating all the content on the channel and it also allows me to keep making improvements to the quality of the videos I make for you. And I really massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people who've made this tutorial possible. And I want to say a massive thank you to Nicholas Hugney and AJH who have recently become a supporter or has donated to the channel. Thank you so much. Painting these larger miniatures and vehicles can be really exciting, but also very intimidating at the same time. So I want to show you how painting these larger miniatures isn't that different to how we approach the smaller miniatures, as we can use the same techniques and steps to get them painted. To make painting our Ballista Dreadnought easier to paint, I kept some parts separate to make painting them a lot easier. I've also chosen to undercoat our Dreadnought using McCrag Blue Undercoat Spray to make painting the blue armour more straightforward. And to make this tutorial easier to follow along with, I've split it up into different chapters so I can better show you all the different techniques and steps that you'll need to get your Ballista Dreadnought painted. In this first section of the tutorial, I want to show you the steps to paint an armour and how we can make it more exciting. The first step is to paint the base colour for the armour and for this we're going to be using the crag blue from the pot. The main reason for this is because the undercoat sprays don't always match the colour from the pots with the same name. So it just means we get the colour we actually want and it lets us cover up any areas we may have missed with the spray. And whenever we're painting, it's always a good idea to thin our paints first and I find using an equal amount of water does the trick. As well, I like to remove some of the paint from the brush on some paper towel first to give us more control over how much paint is deposited. When painting, we want to keep our brush moving to stop paint building up and we want to avoid going over any areas we've already painted to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And because we thin our paints first, they don't cover very well, so we will want to repeat the process and paint another layer. Painting in multiple thin layers like this helps us get a strong colour without losing any of the details. Just make sure to let each layer completely dry before painting another one. We can't underestimate the importance of learning the basic fundamentals of applying paint to our miniatures, and you should see a difference straight away once we start applying these steps when painting. Now we have our base colour painted, let's do something a bit more fun and make our armour panels more interesting using a glaze to create some gradients. Let's start with some Cantor Blue to create our first glaze and to do this we want to thin the paint down more than normal with two parts water to one part paint. This is going to make the paint more transparent helping to create smooth transitions. We're using this Cantor Blue glaze around the armour where we don't want flat areas of colour. So around the base of the legs and any other places you think would benefit, helping to better see the shapes and areas of the armour. Even though a glaze is quite thin, we don't want to think of this as a wash. We want to apply a glaze in an even thin layer, allowing the colours underneath to come through. We can build up the strength of a glaze through applying multiple layers. Just make sure to let each layer fully dry first. Something else we can do is to use a glaze of the colour we're transitioning from to help smooth things out even more. So here I'm using a McCrag Blue Glaze to smooth things out. When you're happy with how your first glaze looks, we can continue our gradients using a Night Lord's Blue Glaze to shift into the darker tones, following the same process of using a glaze. Again we can help create a nicer transition going back in with the Cantor Blue Glaze. Glazing is often seen as a more advanced technique used by more experienced painters, 
but it is very achievable no matter your skill level with enough time and practice. The next thing we're going to do is to learn how to use a recess shade to bring out all those details and armour panels. For our recess shade we use a Night Lord Blue and we want to apply this directly into any recesses to help bring out any features and details in the armour. This is a more controlled way than an all over wash so we don't affect any base colours we may have already painted. Take your time doing this and you'll see how it's brought out all those details and features of the armour. Remember, we're allowed to go back and neaten things up along the way if we need to. So we've been learning a lot of different things whilst getting the armour painted. But there is something else that I do want to show you and that's highlighting. I really want to go into some detail about highlighting and the different stages we can do to really make our armour stand out and impress everyone who sees it. First of all I like to keep a brush separate just for highlighting as I know it will be up for the task whenever I need it to. As well I don't tend to thin the paint down as much as I normally would either as we're not looking to paint multiple thin layers and we want that strong colour. Again remove excess paint from your brush on some paper towel to prevent those thick blobby lines. The first highlight we're going to do is called a chunky highlight and for this we use an outdoor guard blue. This highlight wants to be quite a thick line so we can still see it once we've painted our finer highlights after this. Spend some time painting this highlight along any edges as well as on any raised details and areas. And once you're finished you should see how it's helped to bring out the shape and details of the armour. Our next highlight is called an edge highlight. I'm using Calgar Blue and this is used on any edges and to continue bringing out any details. To make this easier we can angle our brush against an edge and run it along that edge to create the highlight. For the areas we can't do this then we just need to take our time painting thin lines where we want those highlights. If you want to know a bit more about how to highlight and some of the things I do that may help you, I have a dedicated guide to highlighting. I would say to anyone that highlighting is a very important skill to practice and get good at, just because of how much it does to improve the look of our miniatures. And not only that, it really helps to improve our brush control and hand-eye coordination, making us better miniature painters overall. Let's continue highlighting with a fine highlight using Femrisin Grey and we can use this to emphasise any areas and edges we want to be more prominent. The last highlight we can do is a spot highlight, using blue horror to paint little dots on all the corners of the armour where light would be more focused. Now we're done with all those stages of highlighting, hopefully you can see what a difference it's made to the armour of our dreadnought. As good as the armour looks, we can actually do a couple of other things that will impress people and make our armour look even better. The first thing you can do is to paint little scuffs and marks and scratches around the armour using Calgar Blue. I find not having much paint on your brush helps with this and make sure to take your time building it up slowly until you're happy with how it looks. The other thing we can do is to use Rhinox Hide and paint this into some of the recesses around the feet to give the impression of dirt built up in these areas. Now you've seen how we can paint our dreadnought armour, you can actually use these same steps to paint other space marine units as well. And you can even paint other space marine chapters just by changing up the colours that are used. We've now finished painting the armour on our blister dreadnought and you should now have a better understanding of the techniques used so you'll now know what I'm talking about moving forward. In this section of the tutorial, I want to show you how to paint the different metals you see on our dreadnought. The first metal we're going to paint is all the silver details, and we can make things more interesting using more than just one tone of silver. So for the more functional areas like the legs, we can use iron warriors. For weapon details, we can use lead belcher. And for any details we want to stand out more, we can use Iron Hand Steel. This is going to help break up the different shapes and areas, helping them to be more noticeable and stand out. When it comes to painting these larger models, it really does help to spend a bit more time on them, doing those extra little steps to help them really stand out, 
making them more of a feature in our armies. When you're doing getting all those silver base colours painted, we want to create definition to help bring out all those details. We can do this very easily using a wash this time, and for this we're using Norn Oil. This is used over all the silver areas regardless of what colours you chose, and you want to use enough to cover these areas comfortably, so the shade doesn't pull up too much in details where we don't want it to. We then want to make sure this completely dries before we move on to doing anything else. Let's finish all these silver details using Stormhouse Silver to highlight those edges and details. So there's two different ways I want to show you how we can paint the gold on the Dreadnought. We've got the more functional gold for any trims and bullets, but we've also got the more shiny decorative gold as well. Let's start with the more functional gold for any trims and bullets your Dreadnought may have using Retributor Armour for our base colour. We then want to use Reichland Flesh Shade to create that definition. And once that's dried, because we're painting a larger model, our gold would benefit from an edge highlight using Canoptech Alloy to finish these details. For the more decorative gold like the Chest Eagle and any trinkets, start with some Liberated Gold. Again we can apply some Reichland Flesh Shade to create that definition. To finish the more ornate gold details, let's mix together an equal amount of Liberated Gold and Stormhouse Silver. Use this to paint the raised areas, making sure not to cover up any of those shaded recesses. If you wanted to, you can go a step further and do an edge highlight using Stormhouse Silver, depending on how light you want to go with it. It's really up to you how much time and effort you put into a miniature. And you don't have to follow every single step in this tutorial, I just want to show you what's possible. And you should only ever really do what you feel comfortable doing. With all the metallic details done on our Dreadnought, let's move on to painting all the weapons and related details like rockets and lenses. I now want to show you how to paint the Dreadnought's weapons and the details you tend to find on them. The best place to start is to paint all the details and armour that we want to be black using a bad and black for our base colour, making sure to get the solid colour we're after. And because we don't do any shading, we can move straight on to highlighting. To highlight the black, we can use the same stages of highlighting we used for our blue armour. The only thing that changes are the colours we use. So let's start with some mesh and grey for our chunky highlight, painting it along all those edges and around recesses. When you're done with the chunky highlight, we want to use Dawnstone to paint those edge highlights. After the edge highlights are done, we can move on to our fine highlight, and for this we're using Administratum Grey. Finish our highlights with a spot highlight, painting dots of open grey on all those corners. Something else we can do, if we've got different details across the miniature that are the same colour, we can highlight them differently, helping them to stand out from each other. We don't want some of these black details to be as prominent, so for any areas of ribbon and these cables, let's do a chunky highlight using Corvus Black. We can then finish these details using Dawnstone for a line highlight. Doing this should help these details to stand out separately to the weapon casings and black armour on our Dreadnought. For the missiles, we also want to start from a black base colour using a bad and black. We can then gradually get lighter towards the tip first using corn red, moving on to Mephiston red. Then finishing the missiles with a dot of Troll Slayer orange on the tips. Now I want to show you how to paint any lenses and sights, again starting from a base colour of a bad and black. Next we're going to use some corn red in the bottom left of the lens. Before moving on to using Mephiston red, getting lighter towards the rim. Using our highlighting skills, we now want to paint a thin line around the edge of the lens using Troll Slayer Orange. When that's done, we want to paint a finer line using Fire Dragon Bright along the bottom edge. Finish any lenses painting dots of white scar on the line in the top right corner of the lens. You shouldn't expect to be able to finish something this large in just one sitting. 
In fact, I would expect for it to take anywhere up to a couple of weeks to do. But it will be worth it, and once we're done, we'll have something we can be really proud of. There's really not much left to paint on our blister Strednaught, so let's see how we can get things finished in the last section of the tutorial. It's the last section of the tutorial, so let's work on getting the last few details painted. There are some things in this tutorial that I've not had a chance to show you how to paint. And for those details I've covered in the Terminate tutorial and short tutorials on the channel. So make sure to go and check those out as well. Some things that are covered in my Terminate tutorial can be used to paint details on our blister Strednaught, like Purity Seals, Crux Terminatus and Checker Designs. And once they're done, we can move on to the other details I haven't covered. There's lots of wires and cables around our dreadnought that we need to paint. And because most of them are going to be hidden away, we can paint them very simply with a base colour and line highlight. So for any red cables, we can use corn red with a Mephiston red highlight. Yellow cables can be painted Avalon Sunset with a Ushabti Bone highlight. And if you want some blue cables, we can paint them a crag blue with a Kalgar blue highlight. One of the things I covered in my Terminate tutorial is how to paint a checkered pattern, which can be used to paint the same design on the knee plate. As well as that, I do want to show you how we can paint a stripe to add even more interest to our dreadnought. To make painting these stripes as easy as possible, we can use some masking tape of your choice to mark out the design to start with. When you have your stripe marked out, we can use Corax White to paint the stripe. We still want to be as neat as we can though to prevent any mistakes. After you're done painting the Corax White, we can use a Carrick Stone Glaze and then a Bane Blade Brown Glaze to build up some dirt and grime along the bottom edge of the stripe. When that's done, we want to edge highlight using White Scar. When the design's finished, we can remove the masking tape to reveal the stripe. And I want to finish this tutorial neatening up any areas around the stripe if we need to. Even though we can approach painting these larger models the same way as we paint the smaller sized units, we can take advantage of the larger areas and details getting more elaborate with it as they're more likely to be noticed. So let's see how it turned out. Our blister Strednaught is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and get your own painted. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel including how you can paint some of the other Space Marine chapters. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.